Welcome to session number four of the Creative Freelance Income Podcast, the show that offers you advice, encouragement, and motivation to transform your creative pursuits into profitable income. I'm Mark Dixon, and coming up in today's show, I'm going to be talking to you about how to avoid the perils of the lonely creative freelancer, and I've got one brilliant way to protect yourself from it. So that's all coming up in today's Creative Freelance Income Podcast. Wow, welcome back to another episode of the Creative Freelance Income Podcast. I hope you're well. I hope you've, the week's been treating you well. Uh, things are going great, actually, my end of, the, of, uh, of things. Uh, we've been um, spending our time getting the house ready for the new baby coming, and uh, we've had some twinges, so that's uh, pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, I spent my bank holiday weekend decorating the kitchen. So uh, if anybody knows me personally, you'll know that I'm not cut out for any kind of manual work. Uh, and it took me all weekend, but I'm quite proud of my results and feel like a proper dad now for getting that already. So yeah, we're ready now for the baby to come, which is pretty crazy. I've also uh, been in work over the holidays. I'm saving my uh, my actual work holidays for when the baby comes to take a bit of extra paternity leave. Uh, so I've been at work while there's been no students and not really many staff. And uh, it's been a little bit strange, to be honest. It's uh, It's been, been a quiet place to work in, especially when you're used to so many people being around. But, uh, but yeah, that's been going really well. I've been writing some more content, uh, getting in touch with different artists, illustrators, writers and crafters to interview. So that should be co- good coming up. I've got a few people lined up for that. Also got a rejection today, which was awful. I hate it. I hate getting rejections. And I really love this artist's work. So hopefully I'm going to try again, you know, once that we've more established and see if we can get him to uh, talk about his work as well. So I'm not going to say it is because I don't want him to feel bad. But uh, but yeah, hopefully I can, I can work it around a bit. So yeah, things have been great. Uh, ready for the baby to come now. I think we're both kind of ready for that. Uh, also, I've uh, I've started a newsletter for the Creative Freelance Income blog and podcast, and that's going to be a monthly newsletter, and it's going to have things information about competitions that are coming up, uh, any extra articles, my own personal competitions that I'll be running, and uh, and, and any tools and, and productivity things that can help you with your creative uh, freelance career. So if you want to sign up to that, you're going to need to go to uh, creativefreelanceincome.com forward slash newsletter get yourself on the mailing list and then you're automatically eligible for any competitions that are coming up and, and stuff that I'll be running. One of the competitions for this uh, this coming uh, month is for you to win a signed, framed, uh, full-colour caricature of yourself. So if you know me, you know my other business is uh, caricaturing. So if you go to uh, beefies-caricatures.com and have a look at the gift section you'll be able to see the sort of thing that you can win and it's I'm charging 79 quid for a single person so it's worth 80 pound to you get yourself on it that's all you have to do you don't have to share anything you don't have to do anything just get yourself on the mailing list and you're automatically eligible and that's only open to the mailing list uh, so that's uh, some of that information so like I said I was back at uh, back in work this week on my own and it got me thinking about how uh, lonely it can be. And it really reminded me of when I worked full time as a, as a freelance illustrator. And I'd stay at home for, for days on end, not really seeing anybody working, especially if you've got a tight deadline. So I'd be a poor night and nightmare. So I start to think about how can we get over this? And one of the things that I've done, I'm going to talk to you about in today's show. So if you've ever had that feeling of, being a bit isolated and just left out on your own and not really having anybody that you can discuss your ideas with. Especially if you've been to college. If you've studied writing or art or or crafting at college, you'll know how difficult it is to come out of that kind of arty scene. And then kind of, have the, it felt for me like having the, uh, the rug taken from under me a little bit. And I was, I studied at Leeds Met Uni. I did fine art at Leeds. Came home. Decided to live with my parents. My dad does landscape gardener, so I started working for him. And there was just nobody to talk to. There was I had a mate of mine who used to go to the pub and do, do karaoke together. And I'd say to him, I've got this idea for a video that I want to make. And he'd, oh, okay, and drink his drink. And that was kind of it. 
so it was a bit of a bit of a lonely time and really I had to get away from it I couldn't stay at home anymore and that's when I went to travel and live in Spain for a bit and I started my illustration career but I don't ever want to go back to that feeling of being isolated so I think what you get out of university is the the sharing of ideas and that kind of supportive network of people taking you seriously, taking your ideas seriously. And that's what you kind of get, that cross-pollination of ideas and it's a hotbed of kind of activity and talking and discussing your work and looking at work and, 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 like, and really enveloping yourself in it, really submerging yourself in your, spe- uh, your specialised area. And that's something you just don't get. When you finish, you're kind of left on your own. And it's up to you to make contact with people and, and to get that group together again. And I used to love group crits and things like that. And you just don't get it. You just don't get that that external support and feedback. And obviously, one of the reasons for me to do this podcast is for me to help you and for you to help me back with supporting my crea- creative pursuits and me supporting yours. But there's another way. There's a great way, in fact. Uh a couple of years ago, I read a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And I imagine some of you have read that book already. And if you haven't, get it. I'll put it in the show notes. It'll be an affiliate link to Amazon. So I'll earn like about that much commission from it. You don't have to go through my link at all. It won't cost you any extra money. But, you know, I'm trying to be transparent, I suppose. But this book is fantastic. It's kind of set out with tasks that you can take each week, each day, I think. And uh, you create these morning pages where you write down your thoughts and stuff. And one of the things that she, well, two of the things actually that uh, Julia suggested to do was one, as have an artist date, a weekly artist date where you take just yourself and you go and see something or do something to, to kind of please your inner artist. So you're taking yourself on an artist date and I tell you what, that is really hard. I find it really difficult to um, give myself permission just to be indulgent like that. Especially now I've got a family as well. That's really, I find that really tough, which is strange to think that I see myself as an artist and it's really difficult to go out and just be that. And the other thing she suggested to do was to create an art group. And I love that idea of creating an art group and getting in touch with people and having an eclectic mix of artists together talking about work. So that really sparked the idea. And I'd wanted to do that for about five five years or something. I also have read a blog post by Jamie Tardy. And I put a, a link in the show notes to that too. So you'll find the show notes at creativefreelanceincome.com forward slash CFI 004. If you go to follow that link, you'll see all the links in there. But Jamie Tardy is from a website called The Eventual Millionaire, and she's also got a podcast, The Eventual Millionaire Podcast, where she interviews millionaires, basically. And one of the things that she noticed was that these millionaires all were part of a mastermind group, which is basically like an art group, uh, where they meet they meet each week to discuss their business strategies, their business goals, and kind of have a um, some public accountability so they're kind of laying it down and, and then supporting each other. And she wrote a guest post on the on Pat Flynn's Smart Passive Income blog, and I've also put a link to that. And in that, she actually broke down the structure of how she got Pat Flynn to join her mastermind group, and how to structure each of the each of the sessions. So there's a there's a kind of set way of doing it. So what I did, being the magpie that I am. I've mixed both of those two things together because I found Jamie's um, mastermind group quite prescriptive and quite harsh as well. If you miss more than two, then you're kicked out of the group and stuff like that, which is quite good because you're accountable. But I was looking for something a bit more supportive and I wanted it to be a little bit more laid back. So, and I definitely wanted it to be social. So I didn't want to do it over the internet, which is how they create their mastermind group. They do it over Skype or Google Hangouts and things. I didn't want to do it like that. I wanted to meet people in person to get out of the house, have an evening out, um, a few hours, and to actually meet in person and to discuss ideas and discuss what we're doing. And one of the things I did want was a mix of people. So I'm going to now talk to you about the structure of creating your own art group and how easy it is. It was simple. I did this in January. It was part of my um, my sort of 30 day challenge it was to part part of that was to set up an art group and this is the structure that i'm following it's kind of based on jamie's stuff and um and on the artist way 
So first of all, you need to find people for your art group. So for me, I knew I didn't just want artists and I didn't just want illustrators. I wanted a mix. So in our group, we've got a writer, a an academic who's also an artist, writer. He's brilliant. To be honest, he's got so much energy. It's unbelievable. But Lee. So Lee, if you're listening to this, you've got a mention on the podcast. Uh, we've got Andy, the Morlitproof poet, who is a performance poet. Uh, we've got Charlotte, who's an illustrator, and she's also works in a, for a crafting company. We've got Naomi. Uh, so we've got Charlotte Thompson, Naomi Tipping, who's an illustrator. We've got Lynn Adams, who was one of my old students, and she's looking to get into children's book writing and illustrating, uh, as well as other people that are kind of expressed an interest but have not actually met at the uh, art group yet. And they're brilliant. I love going to them. And uh, we meet once a month. So it's not weekly. We do it once a month. And we've, we'll talk about the venue and stuff in a second. But we meet once a month on a Thursday. And it's usually around the 22nd because that's when all of us get paid. So we've got enough money to buy a round in. But uh, so first of all, it's about getting your members. Now, the way I went about getting my the members for our group was I went onto Facebook and I basically just did a status and said, I'm looking to set up an art group who'd be interested in coming. This is what we're planning to do. It's supportive. It's not homework. We don't want you to be told off. It's basically support and some accountability. So you're going to say, I'm setting myself this goal for this month. And then we can say, well, you could try this, you could try that. Why don't you go here? Have you spoken to this person? I know somebody who could help you with that, that kind of thing. And then at the end, when we meet again, we'll say, so Lynn, you said you were going to try and do this, this, and this. You are going to send your work to a publisher. You were going to write three chapters of your book. How far did you get? And then that's the kind of way that I wanted to run it. I didn't want it to be, you said you were going to do this. Why haven't you done it? I think just by, just by setting yourself a goal publicly is enough to spur you on. And it's enough for you to think, oh, I didn't do it. This podcast is live because of the art group my last art group i said oh i've recorded the you know the first session 500 times i feel stupid i'm stuttering i'm still saying uh oh i'm still saying so every couple of minutes what do i do and it's through that encouragement to say get it out there be yourself be your natural enthusiastic self get it on there the more you do it, the easier it'll get. And I'm so pleased. It's such a buzz to uh, to know that it's live on, on, and it's directly attributable, attributable, attributable to the art group. So it's amazing. You can get things, achieve things that are you know that you're that, that you're finding difficult to get over. Find so number one, find members, even if it's just a tentative status update i'm thinking about starting an art group but what do you think that kind of thing uh you can find an email you know an email in the show notes on that you could send out to people there's the structure there so you've got that so the next thing we're going to move on to is the structure of art group i set up a facebook group for art group with the members that expressed an interest so then i can set up events so each event i set up on facebook and i and we put the venue in the timings. We meet uh, about 7.30 on, on a Thursday and we finish at about half 10. It's the, probably the latest night I have in the week outside of the house, uh, which my wife probably loves having a bit of peace and quiet to herself. So we, it's a couple of hours, three hours max, and it's not all that kind of intense art group. It becomes more social. But this is how we kind of structure us to make sure everybody gets to have a have a go, gets to talk, get some value out of it. So what we do is at the beginning, for the first part of the meeting, the first 20 minutes, half an hour, each person talks about one of the wins that they've got in that month. So a win that they've had in that month. So for me, my win for this month when we go will be that I've launched the podcast and this is session number four. I've also got blog posts that go with the podcast and I've interviewed uh, set up interviews I've pre-recorded a couple of podcasts for when the baby comes to make sure I release content and uh and I'm building my Facebook group so at the minute we've got 157 people my goal is to have a thousand members of that group that's a thousand people to support and encourage each other so that's what I'm looking for 
Um, so that, that they're kind of my things, as well as my long-term goals is I want to do some oil painting and I want to get an exhibition of my work. So I'll talk about my wins. Each person will talk about their wins. So I know Andy, uh, the Mulletproof Poet, was on the radio. So that's probably one of his wins. And he's got a stacked schedule of uh, performing and, and comparing different poetry evenings. So check his stuff out. It's amazing. Uh, YouTube Youth, brilliant. And, he's, and I illustrated the cover for his new book, Light at the End of the Tenor. I'll stick a link to that as well because he'll love me for uh, promoting him. But check it out. It's fantastic. It's Nottingham-based performance poet. Uh, what does he call himself? The, uh, um, uh, it's what you get if you cross Nicholas Lindhurst with. Um, oh, I've told the joke wrong. I don't know what the joke is. What's his name? Is Paul Weller? If you... <laughs> Brilliant. I'm a natural comedian, as you can tell. Uh, it, yeah, it's what you get if you cross Nicholas Lindhurst with Paul Weller. So you get an idea of who he is. But you're probably better off checking him out and not listening to my third-rate uh, retelling of that joke. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Uh, so yeah, ch uh, check out Andy's stuff, but he'll talk, probably talk about that. I know that Lee has been away. He's been he's he's, uh, he's been travelling. He's been making artwork. He's been writing. He's just got his PhD. Doctor Fetish is all on fetishism. Is his PhD? Clever man. So I know that each person will have those wins. So we all talk about that. Give that a few minutes each, which is great because you're starting off on something positive, and then we pick one person. Well, one person as is chosen them, themselves to um, to kind of take the hot seat. So they'll show their some of their work, and they'll talk about what they're working on at the moment and the things that they want to achieve. And at that point, we can all kind of chip in and help out. So they can they can ask us questions. Well, how can I do this? What can I do about? You know, I, I want to show my work in in a gallery in London. How? What's the best way to get represented? What shall I do? I want to see. I get an agent. I want to send my stuff to a publisher. I want to get. Rep uh, I want. I want to be. I want to be represented uh, internationally. What do I do? So we can all kind of help out. We might be able to suggest different people and joint ventures and that kind of thing. So that person gets the attention for that extended period of time. So that usually takes about you know forty minutes, another forty minutes on just one person, and that's really good because in that process there's always information you can take away for yourself as well and it feels amazing it feels amazing to help people and you start sparking ideas for yourself and you get pumped up and you get that enthusiasm and you get that kind of adrenaline of it and it's fantastic that you can't get on your own in your studio in your back room in your shed you can't get it on your own so you need other people for it and it's worth biting the bullet and having a go and thinking oh i have to say the first ever art group that we did i found it really uncomfortable because i'd organized it and so i'm introducing people who don't know each other who i have met um, and people who i don't really know that well you know i've met them in a professional capacity charlotte uh, she's a lovely uh, artist and you should check her work out charlotte thompson art i'll put a link to her in fact i put a link to all of the people of our, our art group so we've got charlotte and she um set up Nottingham's Dr. Sketchy Anti-Art School uh, Burlesque Life Drawing. So check out her, her stuff and, you know, it's fa fantastic. So I'll stick a link to everybody who's in the in the art group. You can see some of their work and we can you can see who's part of our group. So we'll do that. We'll talk about each person. We'll, each person kind of help out. We'll chip in. And, you know, there's one person who's kind of takes centre stage for that, that art group for that, that month. And then after that, it's more of an informal chat. So we can go back again and we we always write down what each person said they want to achieve. So we'll cover that. So we'll say to so we'll, so we'll say, right, Lynn, so what did you want to achieve for the month? How how far did you get? Uh, you know, you've you've done this and this, but you also said you wanted to try that. Uh, Naomi, how far did you get? I know that Naomi was uh, working with a poem, a beautiful poem, and then illustrating that. How far did you get with it? Did you find different ways of presenting it? That kind of stuff. And then that kind of leads into more of an informal chat with the group. And what's strange is by then, time's ticking, everybody's buzzing, sketchbooks are out, notebooks are out, papers are out, and people are jotting down. And we'll write down again, so what is it you want to achieve this month? And we'll write that down. And then usually that evening when I get in, I get straight onto Facebook and I'll go back onto the group and say, this is what Lynn said she wanted to do. This is what Lee said he wanted to do. This is what Naomi wanted to do. This is what Andy wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. 
this is what Charlotte wanted to do. Get it? So you kind of get a recap of what we've all agreed to try. And because it's written down again, you've got something to refer back to and something to keep you motivated. So that is the structure that we go for. It's monthly. Now, we're not. We're supposed to be having one on the 24th. And then what we said was, if you've got three members of the group, that constitutes an art group. That's enough people to have an art group. I think three people minimum. Um, this week, we're supposed to have it on Thursday. Now, I know that there's a few people that can't make it and a couple of people that can. So we should still be having an art group because there should be at least three of us there. Um, we've kept it to about seven as an overall group. Uh, which I think is quite a nice number because if it's too many people, then you're rushing through and you kind of want that depth. Um, and I've also limited it to, I've got Lynn is, who is a, was a mature student. so And she's kind of a little bit further down a career path than a normal student. Uh, because what I don't want it to be is just an extension of my day teaching. So I've got old students coming to that. So uh, we kind of limited it. And also I think it's important in, with Jamie Tardy, she suggests picking people who are more like further down their career path than you are so you've always got something to learn well i didn't really i think for me it was more important to be about sharing and encouraging and helping uh, rather than to say well i'm further down the line than you so i'm not going to pick you and i don't think that's jamie's intention but i think for me i wanted it to be more about having a broad range of people rather than you're really far down and i'm going to be able to get loads of stuff from you and you, you know and I, but I do think that to at least kind of match where you're at so that you've you've got other people around you and, and and I totally think that you know as we grow we'll be getting more people in and we'll have kind of uh more advanced people and I still think I'd probably like to do a, a mastermind group where we do it over Skype so then it's completely international you know your postcode is international you can be speak to somebody from America and somebody else in Australia as long as you can get, all get up at like three in the morning to meet. So um, you can kind of decide who you want to invite for that. Um, and that's really how to stop yourself from being lonely, is to get out there and meet people. If you're naturally outgoing and naturally can just chat to people, then, you know, you're probably in a great position to be inviting. But and you've probably got quite a lot of friends that you can discuss art with. But it's so nice to have a dedicated evening of just talking about your work and just talking about other people's work. And it's, it's, it's such a positive thing. It really advances what you want to achieve. So uh, this is going to be your action for the month. I want you to start connecting with people. I want you to at least... Put a status update on Facebook or on Twitter or on Google Plus that says, I've just listened to the Creative Freelance Income podcast. That would get me a nice little share. But if you mention, I've just listened to the Creative Freelance Income podcast and I'm thinking about setting up an art group, a supportive art group, who'd be interested? That's all you have to put. If nobody replies, what you lost? Nobody was interested. If you get a lot of people saying, oh, I'd be interested in that, you know, what sort of thing would it be? Have a read of the show notes. There's a full blog post that goes along with the podcast. And like I say, it's got all of the links in there. So you can use Jamie's stuff or you can use the stuff that I've adapted. It's up to you. So then you get an idea of this kind of structure. And then explain it to them. Say, well, it's going to be supportive. It's going to be encouraging. Who'd be interested? We're going to meet once a month or once a week. You can decide on that twice a month. Up to you. Find out what's going to work for you. Um, and then find a venue for it. Now, uh, we've chosen pubs, kind of not really like noisy pubs, more kind of studenty, barry, student kind of pubs. Quiet, they're quite quiet places, and cafes as well. That's somewhere else we're gonna. And we've we've sort of moved from place to place until we find that we still not really found the venue that's we're all comfortable with, because it needs to be quiet enough for you to talk, but not too quiet that you get self conscious about just you're all talking about artwork and other people are kind of looking at you what are they talking about so I imagine it's a bit like a book club wherever you'd kind of meet for a book club might be useful you could meet around at each other's houses and each person could um, host it you know and get a few nibbles and things could come to my studio or come to my come to my house come to we'll sit around the house and I'll make coffee and we'll chat or something like that it's up to you but for us I like I wanted us to get out of the house and it because I wanted it to be something social as well so that we're actually meeting people and it's kind of fun and getting out of the house and not being just stuck in working all the time so find yourself your members create your structure find your 
venue, create an event on Facebook or whatever other social media you like to use and get going with it. Reach out and get your people. And I want to know how you get on. It's really, I, I, all of this stuff, I want to know how this podcast is helping you achieve your dreams. That's why I'm doing it. That's what I want to get back from it. So let me know how you get on in the show notes. I would love it to uh, to to know that these things are popping up and helping each other. So we're coming on to the inspirational quotes. This one comes from Albert Einstein. It kind of relates to the podcast itself. And the quote is this. Creativity is contagious. Pass it on. Creativity is contagious. Pass it on. An art group is a fantastic way to pass it on. So that is your quote. That's your action. Uh, get yourself onto uh, onto the Creative Freelance Income website. And uh, if you go to creativefreelanceincome.com forward slash newsletter, sign yourself up to the email newsletter. That's going to be going out in May. Uh, the first one will be May. And, uh, and it'll be great to see on there. There's competitions and, and extra advice and exclusive sort of content on there, as well as um, uh, more in-depth uh, blog posts and stuff. So get yourself on it and uh, be eligible for, to win a free caricature. And until next time, take care, keep busy, and let me know how you're getting on. I want to know who you want me to interview, what subjects you want me to cover. Just let me know. Okay, and I'll speak to you again next week. Take care.